Welcome to Just Relationships, the show that offers you concrete ways to make your relationships better. Whether it's your boss, your spouse, your children, or your friends, the quality of your relationships in life directly affects how you feel about yourself and the success you achieve. Your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer, a psychotherapist, telecoach, author, and seminar leader, will interview top experts to help you learn to manage this essential part of your life. And now, here's your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer. Greetings to you. You probably have heard the term, I am a human being, not a human doing. So when people say, be in the now, it's such a common, common term, be here now. And living in the now, living in the present moment, easier said than done. We are very busy. Our world is very um, competitive and not very friendly uh, all the time. And so it can escape us each moment of our lives. If this intrigues you and you want to be a human being rather than a human doing, stay tuned because I am very happy to introduce to you Dennis Merritt Jones, who is the author of The Art of Being, 101 Ways to Practice Purpose in Your Life. Welcome, Dennis. Hi, Dr. Duffy. Thank you. It's good to be with you again. Oh, thank you so much, and I so appreciate you coming back to Just Relationships. This is so generous of you. Thank you. That's my pleasure. Oh. So, 100 ways, 101 ways to practice Yeah, the one. Don't forget the 101. No, 101. (laughs) That's right. That's right. That's right. And first of all, do you agree that it's hard for the average person to stay in the moment instead of wandering off? Yeah. yeah, That's that's the practice of a lifetime, and that's why mindfulness is at the center of all my teachings, is because mindfulness is that practice that teaches you how to be present in the moment. You know, you mentioned we're human beings rather than human doings. This, the skill and the practice you'll find in the book is learning how to bring your being into your doing. <laughs> so okay. That, so that your being shows up in everything that you do. Oh, beautiful. That makes it more manageable, Dennis. Yeah, there's no place to go. There's nothing you have to do in order to, to be on purpose. Your purpose lies in front of you every moment of every day. Mm. That's to be who you are. So the purpose is to be who you are. Yeah, it, the, more specifically, the purpose is to be the living vessel through which life shows up in a unique, powerful way that allows you to express freely who you've come here to be. Hmm. So can you give some examples of who you've come here to be? Um, are there different typologies or or different ways of being in the world, or is purpose divided in, in any way? Well, most people think of uh, living a life of purpose is that they, they feel that purpose is a point of arrival, that when, when everything's in perfectly in alignment when you've got the family and the education and your health and all these these different things in a linear process when all everything's lined up then you'll arrive at a point of being uh, of living a purpose-filled life Mm -hmm. and that's a mistake mistaken belief because because the fact is there will always be something else to accomplish something else to do another point of arrival and if we wait until we get to that point of arrival and think that our life is purposeful um We're going to be on a treadmill for a long time before we get there. So the point of the book is to is to illustrate that, irrespective of what aspect of your life you're talking about, whether it's your relationships or your physical expression, your health, you know, um, your work, what you do in the world, your purpose lies in front of you every moment of every, every day, and that is to be a fully realized, presenced human being that gives meaning and and value to who you are and what you bring to the world. Mm. So in a way, for all of us, our purpose is to self-actualize. Or... Yeah, well, it's, it's to self-actualize, but, but that's, that's not good enough. Mm-hmm. Um, to self-actualize by itself is kind of self-centered. 
Okay. <laughs> it's, yes. it's actualizing who you are and bringing it to to the present moment that that enriches everyone's life, not just your own. Okay. That's good. Well, I I know when Maslow talked about self-actualized people, the the people at the apex are very concerned with with social justice and with yeah. community. Um so it's it's part of actualizing oneself is is making the world a better place is is what well, you're I, saying. Well, I think that at the, yeah, at the end yeah. of the day, that's you know, you have to ask yourself, you know, uh, why did we come here? Well, you know, every teacher from antiquity has taught four basic uh, concepts about life itself. For anybody who's on the pathway of self-actualization or, or someone who wants to understand their purpose in life, and the four questions that we're taught to ask ourselves are, who am I? Number one, you know, where did I come from? Mm. Why am I here? And where will I go when I leave here? You know? Yeah. And, and the bottom line is we're on a journey, the journey of a lifetime, and the journey is really to the place we never left, which is our oneness with life. Mm. And, and it's it's in understanding our oneness with life, which sounds, you know, kind of romantic or, or, or it sounds, you know, a little idealistic, but you can't not be one with life. You are one with life. The, the question is, are you aware that you're one with life? Because right. that that actualized point of awareness is where your purpose will be found. Right, right. So um, if everyone has that purpose to actualize themselves or fully realize themselves, and and in so doing, um, helping other people do the same, um, but yet we each have a, a unique manifestation of yeah. that. Well, you know, and, and for some some people... Arriving at our, our fulfilled sense of self-expression and purpose may be being the best gardener on the planet that you can be, or being the best parent you can be, you know, or being the best employer you can be, or being the best driver on the freeway that you can be. It's bringing the excellence of who you are to what you're doing. There's the there's the rub. See, bringing your doing into your being, or bringing your being into your doing, actually. Your yeah. being, meaning the essence of who you are, into the activities of everyday life. That, that and if you can do that consciously, you're aware that you're part of something bigger than yourself. Oh, absolutely. Something. Yes, we're all we're all leaves on that tree of life, and and with the roots, and and how it they right. disperse up into the into the cosmos. And I, you have so many beautiful. Um, uh, phrases in your book, and um, so it's not what you say. Things don't change. We do. What is your message to the world? Elvis right. has left the building. Tell us <laughs> about that one. <laughs> well, uh, it's about be, learning to be authentic who you are. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of people are. I, I, I used Elvis as a as a metaphor in that particular writing because there are so many Elvis impersonators. There's so many people making, trying to make a living off of being Elvis, you know, right. and we weren't sent here to be a copy of somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, that's mm-hmm. fruitless. We're, we're sent here to be the original author of our own life. And, and that takes courage and it takes a willingness to get outside of the box and, mm. and begin to develop your own sense of, of um, self and that's yeah. that's difficult. That's difficult for people. Um, the, to, your purpose, you know, we're we're taught throughout our entire lives until we reach adulthood. We, we get really good at learning how to do 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 do. You know, accomplish. We get through school. We get married. We get the perfect job. We get the perfect family, and we do all. We're, our lives are about doing, but very few of us are ever really taught how to be. Right. And so. How to be means being present in the moment and understanding that the moment is the gift that's been that, that's been waiting for you to show up <laughs> yeah. and open to it and experience it and express your life in it. You know, um, I, I, I don't want to r- rush ahead of uh, your your com- the conversation agenda, but there's three questions that you know you can ask yourself that can help you 
discern how well you're doing at bringing your being, your essence of who you are, into your daily life, the linear process of your doing. Hmm. So when you're ready, we can discuss oh, those absolutely. questions. Oh, absolutely. No, go ahead. Well, the first question is, you know, that you can ask yourself to see how well you're doing at bringing your being, the essence of who you are, into your daily life is to ask yourself this question. And this is a, it's a simple question, and people may roll their eyes back, but it's, it's, it's profoundly number one on this list of three. The first question is, am I having fun? Mm. Am I having fun every day? A lot of people are postponing having fun until they reach that point of arrival. Mm, right. <laughs> yeah. And, and and that doesn't that that's not giving us permission to 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 enter into a life of just goofing off, but uh, to understand that having fun, we're not sent here just to suffer and to endure until we leave the planet. Yeah. We're, we're, we're sent here to be the fullest expression of life that we can be. And joy, you know, when we're, when we're having fun, joy ascends from within us. And joy is the highest vibration of life, you know, mm. other than love it, of itself, you know. And, and when we're feeling joy, we're in the present moment. And when we're in the present moment, it's where we find purpose waiting for us to realize it. Oh. But it's always in the present moment. Whether you're standing in line at the grocery store or you're you're uh, driving on the freeway or you're changing your baby's diapers or you're pulling weeds in the garden, mm. your purpose lives right there in front of you to be fully present with the activity of what you're doing and bring the fullness of yourself to it. Yes, to be fully present. I, I am getting what you're meaning now, Dennis Merritt Jones, The Art of Being, author of The Art of Being, 101 Ways to Practice Purpose in Your Life. So wherever you are and whatever it is you're doing, be there fully and right. enjoy whatever it is in that right. moment. Right. So Dennis Merritt Jones, I have, I have a confession to make. Oh. I <laughs> I had been practicing for quite some time being in the moment and in some ways it's made me a poor conversationalist because mm. I have become so adept at at just uh, not discarding or forgetting or dismissing but just wherever I am is where I am and when I see people and they ask me you know what's going on with you I, I almost like I have to. It's an effort, and I can't even. You're zoning out. Yeah. yeah I, well, <laughs> I can't conjure it up because I'm not in. I'm not there anymore. I'm right. here with you, right. and I'm just right. happy to be here with you. And tell me about you. But right. then I realize, well, I'm not telling my friends stories. They're telling me stories about what happened here, what happened there. And like, I'm kind of done with it already. So yeah. it's a very strange thing. Well, the interesting thing about living in the present moment is you make yourself ava available to what is. Mm. And to make yourself available to what is means sometimes you have to be the the recipient of other people's need to download or to talk or to express themselves, you know. Uh, but when you're engaging in the present moment and you're, you're authentically being intentionally connected to the moment and whoever's in front of you, whether it's a stranger, whether, again, it's a clerk in the grocery store or your, your, your family member, to be fully engaged, to give yourself permission to be fully engaged with that person where you're looking in their eyes, you're breathing, you're present in the moment, and you're giving 100% of yourself to that moment. What you're doing is honoring their need to feel that sense of authentic connection with, with you. Right. And so it's being available. Yes, being available, and even to the, the grocery store cashier, the gas station attendant, to be to, to look at them. How, yes. how few people actually look at someone that's it, right in front of them. Yeah, boy, that is the truth. Usually our minds are so involved that we're already, in a, when we're in a, when we're in a conversation, we're already thinking about what, what we're going to say to respond to what that person is talking about, you know? Yeah. We very seldom are so empty that we can be present and fully acknowledge another person's uh, point of view or what they're, what they're talking about. The word empty, interesting. 
I um, I feel like I'd like to be a crusader in the customer service industry. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I have taught customer service a bit over the years. But I feel that it would be just so boring in, in that it's so obvious what people should do, and I'm going to use that word should, that they don't do, like receptionists are supposed to receive. <laughs> They're mm-hmm. supposed to be receptive. And I used to do a lot of traveling um, professionally. Right now, I stay in my own backyard to to do my professional work. And I would I would be on a plane for hours, traveling for hours, go to a hotel late at night, stand online, and the and the receptionist doesn't even look at me. Looks at the computer and says name. Right. And yeah, they're, they're they're dialed out. They're just doing their job. They're not engaging themselves with the present moment. Exactly right. Right. They're di- that's a good phrase. They're dialed out. Yeah. They're doing, not being. Yes. And the skill is to bring your being into your doing. Right. So that you're, you're being present with, with what you're doing. You know, there's a great book by Mark Gaffney, who's a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi. He wrote a book called Soul Prince, P-R-I-N-T-S. And the theme of the book is about understanding that every person that we encounter during the day wants to imprint their soul in our essence. They want to give some aspect of themselves to us, but we have to be available and ready to receive that essence in order to honor the gift. Mm. That we we all want to be seen, yep. and uh, seen Boy. for, as, as you say, <laughs> right, for who we really are, yeah. and... When we look at different styles, sometimes when I go into the corporate world and I I do training around uh, winning teams and and conflict resolution, we talk about different styles and people have different needs, etc. But then that's called the platinum rule and the golden rule is that the universal, we all want respect. And when you consider the word respect... Its origin, spect from spectator, spectacle mm-hmm. to see, and re, R E, to c- continue to see, to really mm-hmm. see, Come and to see around, again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I want respect, is what you hear people say universally. And they, that yeah. means they want to be seen. Exactly right. They want yes. to be seen, they want to be acknowledged. You know, right. I, at the end of the day, that what that's really an important thing. Uh, uh, thought that you're uh, you're streaming there dr duffy people want to know that they matter right every human being wants to know that they matter they're looking for validation and so part of what we can do if we're present in the moment and and being one with them in the moment we can give them that sense that they matter by Mm. just giving them our full attention they matter right Right. And think about the places in our life where we could do that, in our jobs. What about in our family life? Most of us, you know, we treat strangers with more respect than we treat our family members. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, and, and and every person in our family, the people that are closest to us, they matter. And they we have a responsibility to show them, to teach them, especially children, that they do matter, that they count. Right, right. And what better way to do that than by giving them 100% of ourself when we're with them? 100%. That, so um, someone once said to me, I was too intense, that when, I, when, I, when people talk, I listen, and I uh, listen so, so carefully, and I'm not, I'm not casual enough. And, um, yeah, I, I didn't know what to, to answer. Mm-hmm. So, well, that can be intimidating to some people. If uh-huh. you're so dialed in, if you're so focused on what they're saying, that it it can cause them to feel like they're on the hot seat, you know. Right, right. But so, that's not that's not your intent. Your intent right. is to be to create that space where they can be fully expressed. Right, but but all that attention can make some people feel like they're on the hot seat. Yeah, that's true. Yes, yes, that's that's interesting. So. If you know someone feels uncomfortable with so much attention, what can you do with that? Well, I think I think one of the things that we can do is breathe into being present with people and 
this is going to sound really corny, be the vessel of love. Mm. You know, not with our words, but by our presence, just by being with people, with who we're with, and allowing the, the sense of connection. See, I, I come from this school of thought that we're all one. Yes. That that we live in this 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 world of multiplicity and duality, but but in truth, we all come from the same place. And so we're all aspects of the same self, if you will, capital S. Mm-hmm. And so that, that self that we each are is aching to be received or be recognized and loved by itself. <laughs> and the best gift, the greatest gift we can give to others is to acknowledge that self in them and just love it. That yeah. sounds corny, I know, but it's, that's the bottom well, line. Well, not to me, but I, I think that it's it's kind of a paradox in that you're looking at the universality of the experience of of being alive. Yeah. And oh, I... um yeah, and um that we are all really the same in this and at the same time we are all unique. Yeah. And there's so much going on right now on the planet, you know, there's so much craziness going on. Yeah. Bet- between environmental issues and the things that are horrendous the things that are people are doing to each other. It's really easy to get sucked into the drama and forget that who we are, what we do with who we are matters. Mm. Thank you for saying that, Dennis Merritt Jones. It's easy to get sucked into the drama. I watch uh, the news and I, I get so upset um, oh. because it, it looks like it looks like we, we're leading into World War Three. And well, yeah. Yeah, and my husband says, uh, you know, don't watch. Uh, well, I I made a vow I wouldn't watch the news at night a long time ago. <laughs> but It's easier said than done, but it's a good practice to it stop is, watching whatever it is that disturbs you. Don't, right. Don't do that. You know, it's just that simple. Yes. Something, you know, it disturbs the essence of your, your being. Don't do it. Turn it off. Do something else. Read a book. Take a walk. Right, unplug. Meditate, you know. Right, un, un, right, unplug. Yeah, unplug. and it's difficult because because we live in a soundbite society where we're all addicted to instant gratification of getting the information, and getting it now. Right. So, so you know, it's hard to tune out. But that's one of the the, the the signs of a disciplined mind is someone who can turn off the TV, unplug, and 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 really plug into a larger. Uh, sense of connection with life, the universe, whatever you want to call it, through Mm. meditation, through mindfulness practices. See, mindfulness is really the process of bringing your, 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 your doing into your being. Mindfulness is bringing your mind back into your body and being present with what is. If you notice, most of our minds are ahead of us or behind us. Mm. You know, they're thinking they're, they're dragging the past around with us or they're projecting us into the future with something. And if we can just give ourselves a gift of being present, we bring our minds back into our bodies and give ourselves a gift of what's, what is in the moment. That's where life is waiting for us. That's where our purpose is waiting for us to show up. Mm. So that's intriguing, that phrase, Dennis Merritt Jones, bring our mind back into our body. Right. Can you say more about that? Well, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, our, our, when I talk about our mind, I'm talking about that thinking mechanism, not mm-hmm. our brain. You know, our brain's in our body. Right. Our brain is only a receptor for, for this amazing thing we call our mind. And we it's really easy for us to project ourselves into the future with worry, with anxiety, uncertainty. There's so much going on that, I mean, who doesn't have worry or concern about something going on in the future, you know? Yeah. We, last time we talked, we talked about The Art of Uncertainty, one of yes. my other books. Yes, yes. And, and we, we all live with that sense of uncertainty. And when we live in that place, the tendency is to project ourselves into, whether it's two minutes from now or a year from now or six months from now, to, to put our minds outside of the present moment. And this moment is your point of power. Understand that. Everybody listening. This present moment is your point of power. This is where you get to shape your beliefs that create your life tomorrow. So be present in the moment. Bring your mind back into your body. And the same with, with dragging the past along. How many people do we know that are living in, with resentment and, and disappointment and regret and all the things attached to the past? Mm. It does no good. It does no good. Mm. 
sever that line and bring yourself back into the present moment and be present with your thoughts, your feelings, your words, your deeds, your actions, and take charge. And is it is it safe to say that it makes sense to deliberate and to be aware that we might regret something so we can reflect upon it and oh, not repeat yeah. it, that sort right. of thing? Absolutely. I, that's not to that's not to say we sh- you know when I when I said that it's not to say that we shouldn't take what's put on our plate and look at it and understand and learn from it. Right. I mean, we're 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 part of our purpose here is to continue to grow and evolve and learn. And how we learn is by looking at what we've done, especially what hasn't worked with what we've done, and grow from it, learn from it, so we don't repeat the same mistake. Right. Right. So. When Socrates said the unexamined life is not worth living, and so many people live and die without any kind of personal reflection. Right. That's why I teach self-inquiry in my my mentoring practice with with my clients. I I teach self-inquiry in the the art of being. I I talk about self-inquiry, where we give ourselves opportunity every day to be still and know, to dive in to the self and you have a conversation. What do I need to... I, you know, there are times when I go into prayer, and I'll ask myself, what is it I need to know in this moment that will allow me to be a better human being tomorrow? Oh, I love that question. What do I need to know? My yeah. goodness. And and there's a wisdom place within us that knows the answer to that, if we'll be just shut up and listen. <laughs> right, right. Be in, you as know, you say and, in your and, book, and be it's, in it's silence. Waiting to, it's waiting to to give itself to us, but we have to make space for it. Make space, make space. Give yourself over to silence. Yeah. Ask yourself smart questions. Right. Well, Dennis Merritt Jones, thank you so much. The show has just flown by. Yeah. So you have mentioned, of course, last month I interviewed you on your other book, The Art of Uncertainty, and I invited you back for your other two right. books. And the art, the art of, being, of being last time too. Yeah. The, art the, art of being. Of, the art of the art of abundance was last That's time. That's right, and too. the art of abundance. My if goodness, people, you are so prolific. Thank you. If people want to go to my website, DennisMerrittJones dot com, they can get information on all my books and my mentoring and everything else I do. Beautiful. And merit is two R's and two T's. Correct. And the art of abundance, the art of uncertainty, the art of being is what we talked about today. And next week, we're going to be talking about your redefining moments, becoming who you were born to to be. Well, Dennis Merritt Jones, thank you so much. I look forward to our interview next My week. My pleasure. Thank and you. this is Dr. Duffy Spencer saying goodbye for now and wishing you great relationships.